All right, good afternoon. No, it is morning, isn't it? Good morning, Magic fans. All right, I am finally getting the chance to open my last booster box. It has taken me a few days. I have held on with great restraint in order to do this. But I am finally able to do this, so let's go ahead and get this started. Um, it is still completely sealed. I didn't even uh, break the plastic for this. I was going to open it all out once, but something came up and I had to stop uh, through the second video. So let's go ahead and get this started. Jace. Now, if you remember from the last few videos, I have pulled a third or three out of the five planeswalkers, starting with, uh, or, and I have pulled two of each, so two Kithians, two Lilianas, two um, Chandras. I only need a few more rares to complete the set, and I only need uh, about four mythics to have them all, which is something I'm really hoping to uh, get with this box. And granted, the chances of getting those ones are astronomical, but hopefully this box will do it for me. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and start by going over the cards for those of you that haven't, um, that are new to Magic as well, um, or those of you that have never heard of Magic and just found this video by accident. Um, this right here is what is called a casting cost. Uh, it's one black, one colorless mana, meaning the colorless mana can be a mana of anything that can be spent for it. Uh, name of this card goes right here. This one is Infernal Scarring. This is an enchantment aura, meaning you can equip it to a type of permanent. So this one says Enchant Creature. Uh, enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has when this creature dies, draw a card. This symbol right here indicates that it is a common, and the, it, the pack generally comes with quite a few commons, then three or four um uncommons and then your rare or mythic uh, at the end of the pack so for one of our uh, uncommons indicated by the silver we have cruel revival it can be played at any time so instant uh, destroy target non-zombie creature it can't be regenerated return up to one target zombie card from your graveyard to your hand it's actually a pretty decent card um uh just cons considering the sheer amount of zombies that they've released these past couple of sets it can it can be quite well and then here right here we have another zombie so this could be a target for uh, cruel revival if you so chose it goes in your graveyard so our uh, the rare for this pack we Hicks's prison warden five drop or five converted mana cost so has five casting cost uh, he is a legendary creature human soldier uh, that is a 4-4. Four four. Can be it has flash, which means he can be cast uh, whenever or at any point on any turn. And then his his ability says whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, if Hixus Prison Warden entered the battlefield this turn, exile that creature until Hixus leaves the battlefield. Which means that you can exile a bunch of creatures all at once. Uh, at, if somebody swings at you. Then you also get a land card, and I'll just go ahead and set that one right there. And generally a useless info card. So from here on out, I'm just gonna pretty much go through the back of the pack and just see what I get. There's the bond, fire conclusion, some of the pack. Goblin Pile Driver is my rare for this pack. Um, a reprint from much earlier sets. He's really good. Protection from blue. Uh, two drop, one two. That boosts himself for every attack in Goblin. It's really good. Um, that. Man. They sure had some broken cards back in the day. All right. Thought for token. Forest and my rare. Oh no, uh, foil 
It's a one drop goblin warrior called Goblin Glory Chaser. It is a 1-1 one -one with Renown 1, as long as it is renowned it has Menace, which is the name, which is a new name for a mechanic that's been around for a while. It uh, Menace essentially means it can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. Real quick, let's see if I can get that to focus in. Seems like whenever I get it, it just decides to uh, focus out, but that's okay. All right, and then my rare is a land. These ones are called pain lands. It's called, uh, Battlefield Forge. It adds either colorless mana or a mana of a color by paying one life. And Battlefield, Battlefield Forge it either adds red or white for one life. So. <clears throat> hey, another infernal scar. See, this is what this one's just an info card about Jace, one of the planeswalkers. The next half of Forest and a rare Elysium Meddler, three drop, one four with flash. When it enters the battlefield, change uh, a target of target spell or ability to him. This is actually really good. Um, so if someone goes to kill a creature that you really want, you can bring him in, change the target to him. Uh, really good in commander. Especially if, uh, say, someone's going to kill your commander. And it's like, alright, now I'm going to bring him in and say, you can't kill my commander, you're going to kill this guy. Um, Liliana info card. Mountain. Oh, alright, one of the uh, rares I actually needed. So this one's a two drop called Sword of the Animist. It is a legendary artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one. Whenever equipped creature uh, deals or attacks, you may search your library for a basic land card. Put that card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. And I'm just getting used to this. There it goes. All right. Getting used to this webcam. It's a little difficult. Let's try that. So since this is a uh, an artifact it, and doesn't have any uh, doesn't require any special uh, mana, it can be put in any deck. So it's great mana ramp for every deck. Uh, green and probably white, actually more likely white than more likely white than green are going to be looking at that. Um, all right, this is just a. Uh, insert for one of these planeswalkers. Um, there, it's uh, kind of a re-release thing that they had from uh, Innistrad. If you were, if you were, if you played back then, you saw a lot of uh, one of these with probably twenty names on the card because it has so many different flip cards back then. It's ridiculous, but that's just uh, for any of those planeswalkers that you saw there. Um, ooh, all right, my rare is actually a mythic called. Jace, one of the uh, two planeswalkers that I needed, he is Vryn's prodigy, Vryn being the place that he comes from. He is a two-drop, uh, one blue and one colorless, zero-two legendary creature human wizard. You can tap him to draw a card, then discard a card. If there are five or more cards in your graveyard, exile Jace, Vryn's prodigy, then return him to the battlefield, uh, transformed under his owner's control. So tap him, uh, discard a card. Then, it's, then he checks to see if there's five cards in your graveyard. If there are, he flips, becomes Jace Telepath Unbound, uh, plus one, up up to one target creature, gets uh, minus two, minus zero, until the next turn, until your next turn. And that is very important, because since it says up to, it means you don't have to target any creature to get minus two, minus zero, until the, your next turn. You can target one creature, but it, it, you don't necessarily have to. Uh, then he has minus three. You may cast target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard this turn. If that card will be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. So if somehow you were to um, get it to your hand, then it's not exiled. But since you're casting it from your graveyard, there's a lot of tricky ways you would have to do. You would have to 
a lot of tricky things you'd have to do in order to get that from your graveyard to your hand while you cast it. But if you were to get it into your hand, it doesn't get it doesn't get exiled. Um, his ability, uh, his minus three, essentially gives something a uh, mechanic called flashback, which allows you to cast cards uh, from the graveyard by paying either the mana, either the uh, converted mana cost or a higher mana cost for the card. All right, then his minus nine. If I can show up here. And it doesn't want to. Oh, oh there it goes. It says you get an emblem. Whenever you cast a spell, target opponent puts the top five cards of his of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So it, this, he's going to be really good in Mildex. Um, uh, I wonder how Modern is looking at him because he's. Um, I mean, in in Modern you're going to be casting spells all the time, so you're always going to be getting. Uh, a mil um, milling your opponent for five, so it's going to be really interesting to see how he plays out in Vex. Next, all right, this one's actually an elemental token, so that's good. I like those things too. Little weird, cute little creature guys. Forest and Languish, really good card. Apparently, some people are uh, comparing it to Damnation. Um, because it's four, it's a four converted mana cost. All creatures get minus four, minus four until the end of the turn. Uh, it's a, it's a really great card. Um, it gets rid of almost every single creature. Uh, okay, so like this is a two two. Um, this is a one four. This one would be dead. Two two dead. One one dead. It. It's just a really great card, and if you don't have anything that's that, if you don't have anything that's bigger, if you have something that's bigger than a four four, then it's just extremely small until the end of your turn. So it's going to be really, really good. Um, no uh, island, really cool island too. Um, and my rare evolutionary leap, really good card. It's a two-drop enchantment for one green and sacrificing a creature. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card uh, into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So you essentially reveal cards, find a creature, then put that into your hand, shuffle the extra revealed cards, and put them onto the bottom of your library. It's a really good card. Uh, that's the third one I pulled, so I'm not going to complain too much. On to the next pack. Alright, another info pack, info card. Planes. I accidentally pulled out my rare. This is a Shivan Reef. Uh, this one's a, like Battlefield Forge, except it goes for blue or red. So, I'm really excited for that. I kind of like those ones. I'm planning on building a blue red commander so I can probably throw that in there. Now for those of you that don't know, commander is a 100 card singleton deck, meaning you have 100 cards and one copy of each uh, non-basic land card, unless it says otherwise, like there's a card called Shadowborn Apostle. That's literally says on the card you can have as many copies as you want of this card in your deck um, but yeah basic lands are the only th other things you can really have more than uh, one of in a commander deck mm. Ashaya the Awoken World uh, I like that token that one's just it's just a really cool looking token I mean it's a big big creature um, I don't even. I can't even tell what that is. I think it looks like it's a tree. Um, you can tell it's on Zendikar because these little things have been in the back here, and right here they're called hedrons. The hedrons are uh, on Zendikar, created by a planeswalker by the name of Nahiri. Um, and she created those to, uh, back on Zendikar when it was first traveled to. Long story. I don't know the whole. I don't know the complete thing, but that just that's just one indication to show you uh, where a card is, just by looking at the art. 
um, an island and a ooh, foil. So one drop called Akron Jailer for three mana, uh, two colorless, one white, and tapping him. You can tap a target creature, and he's 1-1. One, one. It's not too bad. Soul Blade Jin, five drop flying, 4-3. Uh, Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control get plus one, plus one till the end of the turn. Uh, there's a mechanic that came out in Cons of, Tar in Cons of Tark here. Uh, it's called Prowess. It's, it's essentially the same thing. Uh, but it's um, but it's only on the creature itself. So he essentially gives all of your creatures prowess without saying he gives all of your creatures prowess. Pseudo stuff. Always great workarounds. Um, zombie token. Um, since you have pseudos of mechanics that are named, you, can, you have a double stack of them. So you say you have a uh, creature that says whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you gain that much life, but it is not um, uh, classified as lifelink, and you give it lifelink, then it has double lifelink, meaning that when it deals combat damage to a player, you gain li life based off of his own ability and from lifelink. So it's a it's a double lifelink, double life gain. Right, another island. Hey, it's the exact same one from just this last pack. Right. Then Dwin, Guilt Leaf Dane. Uh, second time I pulled this. It's a 4 drop, 3 4 with Reach. It's an Elf Warrior. Uh, other Elf creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1, meaning it is a Lord card. Uh, it buffs other creatures of its own tribal type. Whenever Dwin attacks, you gain 1 life for each attacking Elf you control. That's. It's a. Pretty decent card. Um, I'm not going to complain too much about it. So, it's an elf, and I've been looking actually for elf cards. So, with this set, more elf cards are always good. Alright, goblin token. Planes. Alright, and a rare. Ooh, second mythic, and the second mythic I needed. It's a woodland bellower. It's a, four, it's a six drop, a four colorless, two green, six five. And when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a non legendary green creature card with converted mana cost three or less, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So you can tutor out anything um, that is green and three mana cost. So say you have a green blue or a green black, green red, green white, anything, just as long as it has green in it and the converted mana cost is three or less. You can get it with this card. This is a really, really powerful card. Um, yeah, I can, uh, that one's going to get a lot of play. I can see it. So, well, I was going to say it can even get out uh, Nissa, but Nissa is a uh, who is one of the planeswalkers that was uh, that is in this set. But Nissa is actually a legendary, so you can't get that one. Makes sense why they would do that. Um, why they would say non-legendary creature since you could technically tutor out Nissa. Uh, goblin token. Those, I like those little goblins. Those little crazy, creepy dudes. Planes. And, ooh. Foil is a Hydro Lash. It's a 3-drop instant. Attacking creatures get minus 2, minus 0 until the end of the turn and draw a card. Uh, that's a really good card. Uh, and it's not, it's not even just your opponents. Say... Uh, you're attacking with a bunch of 2-2s, two and your opponent has something on the battlefield that says when opponent's creatures deal combat damage to you, destroy them. You can give all your creatures minus 2, minus 0, and draw a card. But they're all still alive for the next time, until you can get rid of whatever that is. And my rare for this pack, Herald of the Pantheon. It's a 2-drop, two 2-2 two creature centaur shaman. Enchantment spells you cast cost 1 less to cast. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain one life. It's a really good card. I really like this. Um, with the, for the for those of you that have played in Theros and in and in that set, you may remember that there are enchantment creatures, or and and the like. Uh, so you can whenever you cast one of them, because they are technically enchantments, you would gain a life. Thunder clap wyvern, really good. I like that card. Alright, on to the next pack.
Now, for those of you that are asking, I am not, or thinking I'm just throwing them on the floor. I'm not. I actually have a trash can down there. Mountain. And the rare, Tainted Remedy. Three drop uh, enchantment. If an opponent would gain life, that player loses that much life instead. So, have these two on your field, you gain a life. Or, so, you if you were to gain a life, and your opponent has this on the field, you actually lose that life. So, really good card. Um, then you pair that with the uh, uh, Dwin. That, that just hurts to send me without it, actually. No, thank you. Attack with 20 elves. You lose the game. Alright, Nissa. Info card. I wish I got a Nissa. Alright, and then next is a Swamp. Then, alright, my foil is Dwin's Elite. It's a 2 drop elf warrior. 2 2. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you control another elf, put a 1 1 green elf warrior creature token onto the battlefield. It's a really good card. So it's, it's essentially uh, 3 power and toughness for 2 mana. I can't complain about that one. Alright. And my rare is a 5 drop 4 3 Gilt Leaf Winnower. It's a elf warrior that has menace. When it enters the battlefield, you may destroy a target non-elf creature whose power and toughnesses aren't equal. Uh, that's a really good card. If you can uh, bounce it, flicker it, return it to your hand, whatever you need to do, you can just abuse that thing to no end. Just destroy all, destroy all creatures that are, don't have equal power and toughness. Now it's a little, it's a really specific because it's non-elf and it power and toughness can't equal, but it's still really good. Uh, I'm not gonna complain too much. Uh, another zombie token. Don't really much like those zombies. The zombies of Theros were scarier, especially if you read the backstory. Forest, which, and my rare Harbinger of the Tides. Uh, two drop two two Merfolk Wizard. You may cast it as though it had flash if you pay two more mana for it. When it enters the battlefield, you may return target tapped creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So, uh, somebody attacks, you can flash that in and return it to its owner's hand because attacking, or unless they have vigilance, of course, attacking creatures must tap in order for them to, uh, in order for them to technically be declared as attackers. Doctor token. Yeah, like that. Next is a planes. And ooh, another foil. A lot of foils so far. Four drop wild instincts. It is a sorcery. Target creature you control gets plus two plus two until the end of the turn. It fights target creature and opponent controls. So those of you that uh, played cons and dragon sets, you this you know that there's a lot of fight mechanics right now going out. My rare is a uh, 3-drop Exquisite Firecraft Sorcery. Deals 4 damage to target creature or player. And it has Spell Mastery, which is a new another new mechanic. If there are 2 or more instant and or sorcery cards in your graveyard, that is the trigger uh, for spell, uh, all Spell Mastery cards, Exquisite Firecraft can't be countered by spells or abilities. So cast a bunch, cast that, then it can't be countered. Instant 4 damage. And then the Scryfish. All... All love, everyone loves the Scryfish. Alright. Another Nissa card. Next is a Swamp. Alright. Ooh, and then I got a Foil Rare. This is really nice. It's a Priest of the Blood Rite. 5 drop, 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you may put a 5 5. You put a 5 5 black demon creature with token with flying onto the battlefield. Being of your upkeep, you lose 2 life. So if you can just find a way to get around that, uh, like either giving it haste and attacking or using it as a sack outlet for, say, um, evolutionary leap, then you don't have to worry about losing the 2 life all the time. But the 5 5 demon is just really good, especially with flying. Next, uh, my rare, my uh, normal rare, is a Mage Ring Responder, 7 drop, 7-7. Seven, seven. That does not untap during your untap step. Pay 7 mana to untap him. 
and whenever he attacks, it deals seven damage to target creature defending player controls. So you, it, he doesn't even have to deal uh, combat damage. It's just, all right, I'm gonna attack and I'm gonna d destroy that creature right there. Just, just really good. Gideon Jura info card. Next we have one of these uh, inserts I was selling, another insert I was telling you about. Um, move this over, put that right there. And my rare, Days Undoing, the third mythic I was looking for. Oh, and uh, also, I misspoke earlier, I needed five mythics. Uh, these three, and one more Planeswalker, and uh, Angel of Tithes. Uh, Days Undoing, three drops sorcery. Each player shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into his or her library, draws seven cards. If it's your turn, end the end the turn. So this is a really really good card. Um, I am so stoked that I actually pulled that because I've been looking for that one. Uh, that one's going into my mono blue commander to replace uh, time reversal. Uh, time reversal is just too expensive. Um, but that is just, I mean, and when I say it's too expensive, I mean the mana cost. It's a, fi it's a five drop. It's a five mana cost uh, spell, but days I'm doing it as soon as I saw that, it's just really good. All right, Elf Warrior token. First one from this box. Love those things. Planes. And then my rare. Animus Awakening. It's a one in X sorcery. Reveal the top X cards of your library. Put all land cards from among them onto the battlefield tapped. And the rest onto the bottom of your library in a random random order, and it has spell mastery. Um, it, with with the spell mastery trigger, you untap those lands. So, like I said earlier, uh, spell mastery is uh, you have to have two or more two or more instant and or sorcery cards in your graveyard to trigger um, to trigger spell mastery. I'm not gonna lie, that is a really good card. That is not something I can complain about. So. I'm happy about it. Um, Night token, 2-2 two, two with Vigilance. Uh, this is Return to Ravnica. Block. Reprint. Uh, forest token. Wow. Okay, let's try that again. A basic forest land card. Uh, and then Pian and Kirin Nalar, Chandra's parents. 4-drop, 2-2. Two, two. When they enter the battlefield, put two 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature tokens onto the battlefield, and they have flying. Pay 3 mana, sacrifice an artifact. These two deal two damage to target creature or player. Uh, really good. I can't. There's nothing too much that that that's just really good. Um, I can't complain about them. Chandra's parents are pretty bad. Ace. Soldier one one soldier token. Island and my rare Relic Seeker 2 drop 2-2 two, two with Renown 1 when it enters the battlefield search your library for an equipment card reveal it and put it into your hand then shuffle your library really good for those of you that run a bunch of uh, um, artifacts or artifact equipments in commander just find some way to flicker that and just bring out whichever one you need at any point in time it's really good card Alright, another info card that's useless. Planes. Uh, foil, 5 drop, heavy infantry, which is a 3 4. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. So, enter the battlefield enter, enter the battlefield effects are really good, especially, especially since they can be abused so much uh, with a bunch of bounce effects or and flicker effects, it's just a really, really good thing. Um, my rare is Sigil of the Empty Throne, 5 drop enchantment. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, put a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Third one of those I pulled, those are just those are just really good. Uh, I'm not going to complain about those. Um, sorry, just looking at some uncommons. I like doing that every now and then.
use this card. Swamp. I think it's right, Swamp. And then Despoiler of Souls, two drop, three one. It can't, it cannot block. And then for two black mana and exiling two creatures from your graveyard, return it from the graveyard to the battlefield. And so it's a really good um, effect, uh, especially since it comes to the battlefield instead of to your hand. But I think the exiling two creature cards, I mean, unless you're going to use it for Delve, I think two creature cards is just a little expensive for what it does. Mountain Ooh, foil, uh, two drop sorcery, reeve the soul, destroy target creature with power three or less. So I'm gonna uh, you can kill the spoiler of souls if they keep bringing it back. Infinite obliteration. Uh, this is just a really good card. It's a three converted mana cost sorcery. Name a creature card. Search your opponent's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with that name. Exile them. Then that player shuffles his or her library. That is just really good. If you know an opponent has a certain creature card in their deck and it just and you can't deal with it, um, cast that, get rid of every single iteration of it, just to ensure that they never have to draw it. Uh, that I'm not gonna complain. That's is a that is an extremely good card. Doctor token. Anyways. Mountain. And Caves of Coilos, another pain land. That one adds black or white to my mana pool for one life. Right. On to the next one. Right. Another goblin token. Let's figure out where I'm gonna put that. Island. And Alhamerit, High Arbiter, uh, seven drop. 5-5 five, five Flying Sphinx. When he enters the battlefield, each opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose the name of a non-land card revealed this way. Your opponents can't cast spells with that chosen name. Um, He's okay. Uh, 7 mana for a 5-5 five, five of Flying. Too expensive. Um, you can only choose one card. And it has to be in their hand. Um... Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, he's okay at best. Not even decent. He's just okay. I know that may sound weird, but I do uh, qualify okay being higher than decent, or being lower than decent rather. Um, mountain. Right, and then will breaker. Five drop two three human wizard. Whenever an, a creature an opponent controls becomes a target of a spell or ability you control, gain control of that creature for as long as you control Willbreaker. Really good. Actually pairs well with uh, with Jace. Uh, Jace is plus one. Uh, target target one of their creatures, gain control of it. Uh, pseudo permanently. Forest and Honored Hierarch, really good, um, really interesting. One drop, uh, it's a one drop, one one with renown one, meaning whenever it deals combat damage to a player, it becomes renown, and you put that many one one, that many plus one plus one counters on him. So since he's renowned one, he gets one plus one plus one counter on him, and as long as he is renowned, it, he gains vigilance and has tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Um, okay. He's an okay card. Um, actually, I'd say he's more decent than okay. It's, it's just really weird that you have to attack with, uh, with something that could be your ma uh, mana producer. Not something you really do that often. Hmm. I apologize. <clears throat> a little too early for me. Thopter token, then an island, and mana gorger hydra. Three drop one one. Innate uh, comes with trample, <clears throat> and he has trample because his ability is whenever you, a player casts a spell, put a one one counter on mana gorger hydra. Which, if you're able to play that 
early enough in the game, he just gets really, really big. It's ridiculous. Um, I would hate to go over and to have to deal with one of those extremely late in the game. If it's been on there since turn three. Or two, even. Another Thopter token. Oops. Uh, flames. And I got a foil, Ren Wing Mare. Three drop Pegasus, flying, non uh, flying, 2 1. It's a rare, so it's the second foil rare I pulled. Non creature spells cost one more to cast. So it get, it's really good against um, blue decks and, and the like that cast essentially nothing but uh, instant sorceries, planeswalkers, enchantments. Uh, my re my normal rare is Outland Colossus. It's a five drop six six, really good in and of itself, just by itself, or vanilla wise. But he has Renown six, and uh, that means whenever he deals combat damage to a player, he gets six plus one plus one counters on him, and he can't be blocked by more than one creature. So he has Reverse Menace, which means if you were able to give him Menace, then he's just and then he is unblockable. Right. Right, looks like I have about five packs, including this one. Right, another Elish, uh, Ashaya, Awoken Worlds token. Right, another Planeswalker insert. And yes, I knew this was a good pack. All right, this was recorded. I got the token and the Planeswalker that produces that token in the same pack. I am so happy. I now have all five Planeswalkers. Um, Nisa Vastwood Seer, three drop two two. When she enters the battlefield, you may you may this is important. Search your library for a basic forest card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands, exile Nisa. Then run her. Turn her to the battlefield transformed under her owner's control. So when she flips, she becomes Nisa the Sage Animus. Uh, plus one, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield, otherwise into your hand. Um, her minus two pl uh, produces a Shia, which is a legendary creature token, 4-4. Four, four. And her minus seven, which is, a re real, which is the real reason why people want her. Untap up to six target lands. It becomes six six elemental creatures. They are still lands. That is really good. Um, so if you need, if you have a lot of mana available, uh, if you need more mana, minus seven, untap six lands, and you get more mana for whatever you need to do. Um, that is exciting for me. I am really happy right now. Next pack. Um, just another info card. Forest. And all right, I have all the mythics now. Archangel of Ties, four drop, uh, three white, one colorless. Flying three five, really big bite, which is really good for uh, flying creatures because they generally have a small toughness. So you want to, this is just really good. Uh, as long as Archangel of Ties is untapped, creatures cannot attack you or a Planeswalker you, you control unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. As long as Archangel of Ties is attacking, creatures can't block unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. So if you give her Vigilance, nobody can attack you or block any of your creatures unless they're paying one. That is just a really, really good card. Man, I am so excited. Um, I am, I honestly am okay with whatever I pull the rest of these last three packs because I got all the planeswalkers. So, Realms Uncharted, Swamp, right. Priest of the Blood Right. I'll lower that one. Produces a 5 5 demon token. Swamp and Great Aurora. It's a nine drop sorcery. Pulled this one. Uh, if you 
if you've watched my um, uh, my openings on my pre-release boxes, you'll see that I pulled this one earlier. Um, but each player shuffles all cards from his or her hand and all permanents he or she owns into his or her library and draws that many cards. Each player may put any number of land cards from his or her hand onto the battlefield to exile the Great Aurora. That is a good card. Um, it counts towards tokens as well. So say if you had a, uh, an Ashaya uh, creature token on the battlefield and you shuffled and you shuffled it into your library, it, it would count towards the uh, cards that you draw because it is it is technically a permanent, but it does but it disappears when it goes to the when it gets shuffled into the library as a state based effect as the because tokens are not cards they are well tokens they disappear very easily too all right another useless card mountain and foil swamp I like it I like when you pull a foil one just as not just a surprise and then orbs of warding it's a five drop you have hex proof if a creature would deal damage to you prevent one of that damage so it gets around of uh, get gets around a lot of one one uh, one one tokens like the thopters goblins soldiers elf warriors it's, just says, oh, hey, yeah, I see you. Yeah, you're not going to do any damage to me. Um, so I'll just sit here, take up, take it off. Well, thank you folks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, I, if, I eventually plan on starting magic discussions with some of our friends and posting them on. So uh, go ahead and subscribe if you're looking in for that kind of stuff. Uh, Again, if you have any questions, post them below. Thank you again for watching, and y'all have a great rest of your day.